and Paul want to get married and they're getting 10 grand to pay for the wedding. All they have to do is agree in the presence of a lawyer that Paul will organise every last detail. Orla can have nothing to do with it. We'll have no contact with each other now until your wedding day. But Paul is not taking the traditional route to the altar. Can I ask you where the wedding is? It's on a mountain, in a bog. He just may not have thought this through. I'm worried that it's not going to be ready on time. His fashion sense is nonsense. Um, I don't think it's me. <laughs> it's not you. It wasn't his finest feckin' moment. If at first you don't succeed, cry, cry <laughs> again. Will he get the boot on the big day? We need uh, either a welly or a proper hiking boot. Oh, my word. What, a dress and a party? <laughs> I can do that. Oh, really? Just remember one thing. Don't tell the bride. Paul and Orla live the good life near Loch Ray and County Galway. He's a baker, she's a holistic therapist. They met in the market when Orla was smitten by the sight of his muffins. Orla turned up at my stall and I had an accident where I had broken a ligament or a tendon in my finger. And uh, I was standing there with my owie finger and she said to me, oh, I do craniosacral therapy. Will I fix your finger? So I jumped from behind my stall. She had her finger on his finger and it did some kind of a, and it was just quite strange. We were also, it, it was, there was something going on, like an electricity thing, but it was very real. There definitely was a, a spark between us. Something went off, some light in my heart, not my head, in my heart just went pitching. That was it, literally, was I it. fixed his finger. Yeah, that's where it started. <laughs> With Paul's finger fixed, this couple got their fingers out, moved in together, and just three months later, there was a little bun in the oven called Haley. It just all felt right. There was no, yeah, we kind of questioned at the start, are we mad? But then when we're together, there was no timeline. It didn't feel, it just felt like we've always known each other. Orla was quite keen to, you know, settle down, have a, have a child. They seemed to click well together, so. Why not? They went for it. Orla is leaving her wedding to her country baker, but when it comes to being organised, Paul has the perfect pedigree. His parents are German, so those German traits are definitely there. Mm, he's, he can be quite abrupt sometimes. Or oh, sensible. I don't know. Am I insulting everybody in Germany? <laughs> Better be careful. Everything's black and white. He wouldn't be a social person if he can avoid going out to parties or going to, you know, gatherings and stuff like that. Yeah, he's not there. He's a lovely man. Absolutely. But I always thought he was a loner. Best place in the world is a big field with only me in it. So it came as a big surprise when this lone wolf popped the question. And I said it to him afterwards, I didn't think he'd marry Orla, to be honest. And he said he loves it very much. Bananas? It rains it off for me. You know, it's like it's like we have our home together, we have our children together, and you know, you know the, the marriage part is is the completing the circle for me, like. She'll want the full wedding. She wants the princess bride wedding. Though he has ideas of what I want, he still doesn't know what a wedding entails. Romance isn't high up on his <laughs> list of things to do. So he will think of the practical things, yeah. All he sees is a party. He doesn't see the importance of the dress or the shoes or the makeup or the hair or the nails. He just sees a party and he sees friends. After two and a half years together, Paul is going it alone. Today, Orla moves out for three weeks. Not seeing Paul for three weeks is going to be hard because we haven't been apart. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit scared about being on my own. Well, you know, away from Paul for three weeks. Now, we all ready to go? Can we say bye bye to Daddy? Because she definitely will miss him. There's no two ways about it. I mean, they're, they actually are a very, very close couple. I'll keep kissing on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you too. Okay. okay. From the first day we laid eyes on each other, we haven't they had three weeks hadn't passed where we haven't seen each other. Bye. Orla is moving in with her best friend and bridesmaid Suzanne near Gort. It feels sad, like definitely. Yeah, 
I'll have a good cry. A good glass of wine with my friends. <laughs> family are very close, literally. His sister and her partner live next door and his parents are just at the top of the road. I'd say Paul is more, I don't know what you call it, a home bird. He spent all his life here, he grew up here and he fits in well here. He's never happier than when he's around my glass. He's not going to like to just go that far away. The further away he is, the, the further out of his comfort zone he'll get. It's a good idea to have it kind of local. For the ceremony, Paul isn't using a church. He's decided to look further afield. Actually, he's looking at a field. We never considered a church wedding. Uh, neither myself or Orla attend church. It doesn't really feature in our lives as such. So, no, a church wedding was never really an option. It's an unusual venue for an unusual wedding ceremony. Well, this is Loch Torric Lake. I've been coming here since I was a child. It's a uh, a place that's dear in my heart and I like to come. And this is where I come for peace and relaxation. I come to Lakatorik and I hang out here. We're going to have a pagan ceremony. And having the pagan ceremony uh, means that we can get married anywhere. This may be the perfect venue for Paul, but not everyone is as certain as he is. You know, a lot of people mightn't. I don't know, they'll just find it a bit too boggy for a normal wedding. Like I'd say, my parents probably would find that, you know, they'd expect a more traditional kind of thing. Let's hope he doesn't get bogged down with all the arrangements. So what first? Dress? Venue, perhaps? One of the first things I have to do is get the shoes. She wants the shoes early on so that she can break them in. We're trying here. Oh, this looks nice. I wouldn't be totally convinced about it. I think getting a dress first might be a help, but we'll see how it goes. Morning. We're looking for a pair of wedding shoes. Okay. Um... Now for every shoe shop sales girl's worst nightmare. I brought her most comfortable pair of shoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm always told these are comfortable for a high shoe. So oh dear. Okay. Might be might be a little worn at this stage, but I don't know height wise is that similar or is that completely, completely, completely different? Completely different. Completely different. With the wedding in a swamp, Paul will have to think outside the shoebox. What do you think? Yeah, I think we should get a pair of uh, wellies or boots as well as the shoes because uh, the they're shoes a are a bit thick and chunky, aren't they? Oh, they're a fine welly. Instead of wellies, what about? Something a bit shiny, a dock. That's a, that's a streetwear boot. That's not for off-road. I think a pair of sturdy boots would be good. Uh, but like, you can't actually wellies. bring... You don't want her in hiking boots, do you? Want a bet? They'd be better than hiking boots. Jesus, I don't know. A lady's version of this. Well, we're hopefully going to have the ceremony in Lakatorik, and uh, it's quite a, a wet place at times. So I think um, that the high heels would be a no-no up there. So we need uh, either a welly or a proper hiking boot. Uh, I'm not too sure will this uh, be able to deal with the level of moisture we're talking to. And uh, so uh, maybe we should go to a proper boot shop. These are quite expensive. They're a very sexy welly. But I think for uh, the price of the Wellington, we could get a proper hiking boot, which uh, would get more use out of than a pink welly. Would you prefer something like these kind of boots? In girls' version, is it? Yeah, something like that. Eventually, Paul remembers that he's actually buying shoes for a wedding. Over there. They look nice. Yeah. You have this and a six. A six? Yeah, yeah I like can that. have a check for you there. Yep. Is it for a special occasion? Oh, I'm getting married. Oh, you're getting married? Oh, brilliant. Yes. And you're picking the shoes? Yes, yes. Oh, very good. Now, so there's the shoes, all right? So I think you've made a great choice of those ones. She'll definitely get wear out of them again, you know? Very good. Yep. Them. All right, have a great day. Take care. Right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. He found a pair of wedding shoes, but he just might need those pink wellies after all. Still completely in the dark, Suzanne and Orla try to second guess what kind of wedding a German baker might have in store. 
you know, if he's making all that effort, it'd be nice that it just stands out a little bit. I think, yeah, hopefully. But I don't think he understands how dressy a dress is, kind of just buying it from a shop. I'm just afraid that if he goes for, like, a non-traditional dress, you know, goes into a nice boutique, that mm. the dress will be gorgeous, but it, somebody else could arrive in the same That'd style, be, yeah, you know? And you know the way you wear, you know, maybe a hairpiece or something, and he, he wouldn't get that, so mm. I'd, be, I'd be one of the wedding party instead of the bride. Okay. Oh, they'll notice her. She'll be the one getting married in a bog. So how are you feeling? Are you still feeling quite tearful? Or are you feeling about everything? And I know it's emotional before you get married anyway. You, you know, tearful. that's you yeah. are tearful, like, you know. But then you're just trying to enjoy catching up with friends and seeing everybody and yeah. doing stuff and having the single life that I mightn't go back to. Yeah, of course. I didn't <laughs> think about it like that. Yeah. yeah you might like the single life. <laughs> Now Paul has a list of venues to look at. He's not going far. None of them are outside the parish. I like the idea, though, of having it local rather than just fucking hours to drive there, hours to get home. Oh, it's much better if we have it local. I'd say he'll look for something close enough to home so friends and neighbours and family, they can all come along. And I'd say it won't be over the top. I wouldn't think that's his style. Paul's style, we could all be sitting out in his back garden, having a barbecue, I'd say. His friend Anne has a and b which could be an easy answer to the problem. There we could have the, the ceremony if it rains. We can't do the mass I know, this is a really good plan B in case we get washed out up in the Because it gets too wet. So plan A is a bog, plan B is a bandstand. Lovely. Lovely. Hello. Hello, Anne. How are you? How's it going? Welcome. Looking fantastic. Oh, you too. So tell <laughs> me, you? you're getting married? Yes. We're going to, uh, in two weeks. In two weeks. And uh, <laughs> we, have, <laughs> Good. we have 70 people coming. Right. So. Can you cater for 70 people? Oh, we can, yeah. Would you like so to come and see? Let's it's, have a look. It's well on the way. Oh, very good. Let's have a look. I know Anne for about 25 years at this stage, possibly even more. I like the, the ambience and uh, I know all the people involved, so I feel very comfortable and at ease here. Paul may see his bride-to-be in a B&B, but Orla is more ambitious. For her, a castle in the wilds of Connemara sounds a bit more like it. You're brought up looking at princesses and looking at castles. If I had an ideal place, it'd be a beautiful castle on beautiful grounds with a beautiful lake and lovely big grand rooms. And yeah, the dream kind of fairy tale venue. Get married here any time. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. What's up in the Hi, how are you? Great to see you. Who's Orla? I am. Orla, great to see you. You're Hi, very, very welcome. Thank you. And yeah. Suzanne, Thanks great. You. you must be Julie. Pleased to meet you. Well, you're very welcome to Van the Hinch. Yeah. This is gorgeous. I'm delighted you made it. Thank On a glorious day, as yeah. it always is here, of gorgeous, course. We, yeah. have, we have a special dispensation for that. Yeah. <laughs> we are a bit unique in that we only do about three or four weddings a year. Uh, okay. By choice, well, because yeah. we're, we're not a banqueting hall. Yes, uh, yes. So now you can have a chance to have a look around. Yeah, great. Yeah, would you like that? Nice. Great. Yeah. So if you could imagine during the during your weekend, you'd have the, the entire house to yourself. Yeah, you know, You'd yeah. have all the rooms in the old building here oh, on the riverside. And if it's yeah. the season you can go fly fishing, we own the river outside. Yeah. I would mm. imagine it would be way out of budget, but it's still really beautiful. I wonder what he's thinking about though. I wonder what he's got in mind. What Paul has in mind is, who needs a castle when you have an outhouse? Okay, so, you remember our sheep shed? Yes, we <laughs> have. Prepare yourself. Use your imagination. Yes, isn't it lovely? It's going to be amazing. Yes. Yes. So what I was thinking was we'd have all lights along here and drapes over the lights and a top table along yes. here. So we have a buffet there, down yes. that wall, and a door opening out so they can bring food in. Oh, and good. a bar on that side. Okay, very good, yeah. And there's loads of space around. Yes, but there's loads of space here as well. And it's a castle. This is the dining room. This is the, this is the restaurant where people have dinner. So again, it's your private dinner party, and that's the way to view of it very much. And this, this is particularly nice. I mean, if, 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 if you're going to sit down when it's still nice and sunny day. Oh okay. my goodness, it's absolutely magnificent. It's so picturesque, this place is ideal. It really is, it's everything. It's got the big bright windows where you eat, you know, the fantastic scenery and 
being a sunny day it just makes it yeah this it's very romantic as well it's really yeah just it's just it yeah it's perfect not that the man himself would be looking out the window at the view with the view no, he has he'll probably be down there in the river fishing all the rest of the <laughs> <clear parties. laughs> shall we shall we look at the rest of the um, the restaurant Orla loves a bit of grandeur, but Paul's approach is more minimalist. Well, yeah, I think this is a, a great venue. It looks fantastic and all the, the bits are in, in, in place for it. It's also it's very close to home. It's quirky and it's different. And uh, it doesn't have the, the atmosphere of the, the usual large hotel kind of a scenario. So I think she, she would definitely like this. Orla is so smitten that she'd like her ceremony here too. Well then, on the lawn, Right here, oh, right. there's plenty of room for all your guests. You've got the flowing water going behind you. Lovely. Flowers, all that. It'd be quite ideal. And it'd be quite nice to make it separate as well because your guests could, could, could then leave the blessing. Okay. Return to the terrace for drinks. Lovely, let the party yeah. begin. Beautiful. And you can have your musicians here as well, maybe a string set playing, uh, playing a few tunes. And the weather you go in. quartet. And the weather will be perfect, as Absolutely. it is now. Absolutely. That sounds really exciting. It sounds so perfect. It really does. I mean, wow, this is gorgeous. What? This is like an hour and a half away from our house and I can't imagine him getting into a car and travelling to find places. A distance from the house, yes. I think people are willing to go the extra mile. I definitely do. Orla dreams of coming back to her castle in a couple of weeks for her fairy tale wedding. But with Paul in charge, can her story have a happy ending? Now he has to find a very special bridesmaid. He's never even met Orla's sister Audrey, who lives in Australia. I think for Orla it would be a humongous surprise if she turned up. And uh, she would definitely get a great kick out of that. Hello. Hello. Hi Audrey, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good, good. I have some good news. We're going to get married in two weeks time. Oh my God, he's real. Uh, I was wondering, would you come and be our bridesmaid? And we'd like to buy you a ticket. Yeah, that'd be deadly. Jeez. Do you mind if I go and pick out a bridesmaid's dress for you? Because we won't have time to go and buy one when you get here. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll bring my heel. It's hard to tell which is the bigger shock. The invitation or the fact that a man she's never met is buying her a dress. No worries, what are you going to be picking for me? <laughs> Two scarves. Audrey's flight will cost 20% of the total budget, which could be bad news for the bridesmaids, because when it comes to shopping, Paul has his own way of doing things. He never goes clothes shopping. He can't tolerate it. I don't know how he's going to do it with bridesmaids. It's like, you know, after one shop, his head is done in. He'd rather sit and wait in the car. It's going to be quite fun, I would imagine. <laughs> I don't think Paul's a bit of a, much of a fashionista, so we'll see. You might go for the uh, Reader's Wives look or something, I don't know, I might really struggle with it. <laughs> now for the thing that every man fears, a department store. Suzanne can't be let in on the secret that Audrey is the second bridesmaid, so Paul must buy a second dress without her finding out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can sense the lack of excitement as Paul surfs the clothes rails, and poor Suzanne has just one word for his fashion sense. Purple. Uh, Yuck-tastic. Pick three, Suzanne. Well, can we look at more? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the other section? His patience is already wearing thin. Uh, we're getting a dress inside the next 10 minutes and uh, we're going to pick out the nicest one which Suzanne looks fantastic in and uh, then we're going to get on and do something else. This is my upstage of the cake, not the bride. <laughs> like. Put that one back. Yeah. And flattery will get him nowhere. Looks great, Suzanne. I sense a note of insincerity in your tone. No, 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 I'm completely <laughs> sincere. How much are they? I think it's really 180 quid. It's ludicrous for an outfit somebody wears for a few hours. Um, a few hours on your wedding day? Now, proof that you should never let a mail near the sail rail. Yeah, that looks good. You'd prefer that one. Do you think? I think it's a bit exposed. Not as exposed as Paul's lack of interest, Suzanne mounts a cover-up operation with a shawl. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. Now. Let's get a bag. With Suzanne gone, Paul sneaks back in for that second bridesmaid's dress. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Would you have something like this in a size 10? Not in the same dress, but I could try and find something in the same line for you. Nothing matches, 
And leaving Paul alone in a dress shop can be a dangerous thing. Is this um, suitable for a bridesmaid? To, or with all the black? I think it's a fabulous colour. I like the colours. I know oh, you can see the black straight away, but you can also oh, okay. have pink as well. Yes, that wasn't the question. Not that Paul really cares. The bridesmaids will be wearing black. Two of those, one in a 10 and one in a 16. No problem. Suzanne gave up her entire morning and will end up with a dress she hasn't even seen. Thank you very much. OK. Uh, we've got two bridesmaids' dresses. Um, they look absolutely fantastic. I know Suzanne hasn't tried it on, but uh, I'm, I'm sure she'd be delighted with my choice. I'm sure she will. Just as he was making progress, Paul now has to find another venue. The B&B can't fit 100 people. So, the search goes on. First of all, we thought there was 50 to 70 guests, and then all of a sudden there's 100 guests. Paul isn't getting an easy ride. Maybe the local stables can help him out. It's a sight for sore eyes. The thing is, it's also a building site. How are you? Good. You have to wear these, eh? we're not quite ready yet. Not quite ready yet, really. This is the function area. Uh, this is where we want to seat all the guests. Uh, it's going to look amazing. We have big fern plants coming up. We're going to decorate it with flags. This is our kitchen. The, the banister, of course, will be, is being made right now and... Uh, Very good. Will you have it ready in 10 days? The pressure's good, so uh, I think we'll definitely have it ready in 10 days. Um, it's a beautiful building site. I can see the place has uh, fantastic potential. I'm a little bit worried that it's not going to be ready on time. There's still quite a lot of work to do everywhere. Merrill has promised that it will be ready, but is Paul going to risk his happiness on a builder's estimate? And, after the flight from Australia, can he afford it? How much are we paying you? Altogether, €3,620. At the moment, we're doing a lot of it on cost price. Because it's our first wedding, we'd really like to do it. I know that there's no accommodation here for the guests, but you've got two chalets. Could one of those be for, like, kids just put them to bed or something? Or anything else that we can put into the day to make it special. Bare walls, no floors and no furniture. But Paul decides that if they build it, they will come. At least he hopes they will. Now, two men and a wedding dress. Here, white is a really new colour. White is all the rage right here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there's ivory, we could go for that. Champagne is, Champagne. of course, massively different. <laughs> Champagne sold last year. Man. Move over Milan, Paris and New York. Make way for Chu, the fashion capital of the West. I suppose, possibly, he will be most stressed about the dress. It is going to be easy, and I think he is going to have a headache. <laughs> if he's had a rough day or if it's all just too much, Homer Simpson will be playing in his head. It's going to have to be accepted that he might get it really wrong. <laughs> Budget is about 600. It sounds like a lot of money for a dress. Jesus. Why? She's going to be wearing it for like six or seven hours, man. It's a bargain. 100 euros an hour. Orla has no idea that her sister's flight has depleted the budget and her dream dress may well have a nightmare price tag. And this bride knows what she likes. That's not me. Not the veil, not the frills, not the dress, not the white. Quite specific what I don't want. Okay. I don't want white. Fair away. I'd preferably like it without adding a sash or without adding a bow. Okay. I'd like it, you know, I, I, I'd ideally like a coloured dress. This is a fat dress. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's gorgeous. Like really that, that's, that is very pretty. The colour is lovely. Yeah. I don't know if the lace will suit me because I'm small. I think lace has too much body to it. We have a nice gold one here in the very soft, oh, slinky yeah. satin. Oh, the fabric. That feels gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. True to her word, Orla shuns white for a shade of champagne. So you've been uh, given the big task of finding a, a perfect dress for the perfect... Yes, the perfect, perfect dress is what perfect we're after. Perfect dress for the perfect bride. Yes. Paul seems to know his bride. He's trying out different colours. Yeah, yeah, that, now, so this is the first pale gold one. Now, so this is the second of your coloured dresses. But he's not convinced. I don't think you're very enthused by colour. A little underwhelming. Owen has a suggestion. Now, for me, without knowing her, this is what I would select. Yeah, very good. It, it's going to give her the best of everything. It's a wedding dress. Mm -hmm. It's not fussy. It's not poofy. It doesn't have bits hanging off it. It's quite simple, but we can quirky it up. Okay. <laughs>
The dress may not be fussy, but Orla is, and she's found something completely different. It does, it feels lovely on. I just don't think it's me. It's a, like, it's really pretty. Honestly, Orla, I have to say, you look, uh, if you look, you look really, really slim. It's not me. It just, okay. yeah. It is nice though. If mum can't get it right, what chance has Paul got? Aww. Let's go for this other, sorry. Really, I think it's beautiful on her. Honest yeah. God, I really, I think the colour and everything is really, really nice on her now, to be honest about it. No. It looks like this bride is going to be all white on the night. What do you think of something like this? Yeah, it's lovely. I like it. Nice. nice. Yeah, yeah. So we can incorporate something like a pink. That's really nice. Yeah, that looks much better. Yeah, that's, that's I like that. That's good, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Now this is your. Drink. After a long search, everybody breathes a sigh of relief. Oh, yeah. What, what do you think? Stunning at the back. Yeah. It's even the colour is just yeah, I just instantly it looks more like your kind of dress. Yeah. That's it's, really nice. It's extremely elegant. It really, really just, is. I beautiful. just love the colour. It's so rich. It's kind yeah. of making me go flutter, flutter. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I think I could wear this. Is that really bad now? <laughs> but I won't be getting this. So I'm trying not to like it too much now. Yeah. I think you'll, you'll come true. I really do. She might be surprised. Absolutely. I, I don't think Paul would really get that this is what I want, like, do you know? I mean, I didn't know it's what I wanted, so how's he going to know? Paul would need to be telepathic to get this right, and he seals the deal with the white dress and sash. That one wins. It looks good. That wins. And to top it off, the perfect accessory for a bride so getting married in a windy mm -hmm. field. What about popping a veil in just to see? Yes, let's have a look. Where's a look? look? Just as a small little bit of detail in it. Gives the tour. Give us a try. <laughs> You're looking at 1100 to order it in for you. I would be able to do that for you, obviously, at a better price. We would be giving you our sample off the rack. Oh, it's just mad, like. A good second-hand car. <laughs> second-hand car. <laughs> Lovely. The father of the groom is on a mission, with help from Sophia and Ethan, Paul's older children. And it's time for Orla to find out the date and time of her own wedding. Hello. Thank you, Daddy. Oh my God! Hi. How are you? No hug. I haven't seen you in ages. Yeah. Sophia, that's deadly. Oh my God. You have to open that one first. This one. Wow. This looks really pretty. I'm so excited. Do you know what's inside? Yeah. Ooh. What is this? It smells lovely. Oh, oh my God! Oh, the 29th? Oh. oh my God, what day is that? It's uh, Saturday. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's gorgeous. Did Daddy make that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi babe, we have a date. We're getting married on Check the Loaf of September, which is next Saturday at 2.30. Love you loads and loads and can't wait to have you and Hayley back home with me. Oh, my God. I'm married. Thank you, guys. It's so lovely to see you. And now for the bride's first clue as to where her wedding might be. Here, knee highs. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I need new wellies. <laughs> and he got me pink. I love it. They're going to come in very handy. Snappy they are deadly, aren't they? We'll have to get you a matching pair as well. They look lovely with the black and uh, green polka dot wedding dress. <laughs> got you. <yeah. laughs> nice mm. pink wellies. Just as colour coordinated as ever. <laughs> Paul might be an old stick in the mud, but at least now the bride won't be stuck in the mud. You can have this <laughs> Wow. Oh my god. Oh, musty, musty. Oh, they are fantastic. Look at the body. And there's the inside. It's a little funky Spanish make. Oh my god. Really they are deadly. Wow, think? we. They are super. Wow. They are killer bride shoes. Oh, they're really. <laughs> it's mad getting a date now. I can't believe we're getting married in a week. So that's very exciting. And yeah, just because we live in such a bubble.
you know, there's been no contact for now. It's just, yeah, it's real. <laughs> it's very exciting. I'm really looking forward to it now. Yeah, things are starting to come together. Um, we have the venue sorted, we have the food, we have pink champagne for the venue, and uh, most of all, we have a helicopter to fly Orla there and back. Paul's dislike of shopping is well known, but he seems to have overcome his phobia when it comes to suits for the lads. I think that's our colour, is it? We're going to look good? Oh, <laughs> I don't mind it too much. <laughs> Orla would be very impressed that I turn up in a suit. It seems that shopping can be fun when you're buying for yourself. Paul has a suit to match the Irish weather, grey. The boys are ready to go. Let's get married. With the wedding just days away, it's time for the hen. So what has fun-loving Paul planned for his lovely ladies? Here we go, slow. Excited? Yeah, where are we going? Can't Come on, tell me, tell me, tell me where, tell, we tell, where, tell, where we go, where we go, where we go. Go on, please, please. I'm very excited, yeah. Give me clue. Oh. Do my best. And with Paul, ladies who lunch. Lunch in the local hotel. And when you marry a baker, you get to have your cake and eat it too. Another no, all for you. I got it. I got my date. Yeah. A big loaf of bread. And um, it was in a love heart shape. And there's two sesame seeds, or sunflower seeds in love hearts, and then 29 on it in dough. On the 29th. When's the 29th? <laughs> Next, up to the spa for champers and pampers. Perfect preparation for a wedding in a marshy field. Paul has his own version of a wild night out. He's in a bar drinking water, which says a lot about a man. And... I'd say he'd be a disaster. I can't imagine. I'd love it. A complete disaster. So you picked her out a nice dress? Beautiful dress. What colour? Beautiful dress. <laughs> First, she's in tune to see what dress the man who hates shopping has bought her for the big day. In this morning, I'm feeling excited. Can't wait to try my dress. And I've only 24 hours to go now. But... The past two days have been pretty long, just fed up waiting. But I hope it's just not pure white or 90 shades of cream or ivory. Uh-oh. You're obviously dying to uh, to see this dress. Yeah, can't wait. We'll bring it straight up. We won't waste any time. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Up we go after you. Sure. If we don't like it, I'll take that one. Oh, perfect. Well, hope, <laughs> hopefully we won't be going with that one. So after you. In we go. Wow. Wow. The Flat dresses are dress. all snow white. Not good for a happily ever after. At a glance, I don't see colour. You don't see colour? OK. Now I'm going to bring you over here. OK. It's just behind the curtain. Okay. And we're going to give you a little look. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> yeah, I am now, yeah. It's very real now. Oh, so will she see red at the yeah. sight of Three, white? Three, two, one. Oh, my God. Wow. This is what he's chosen for you. Wow. OK. It has colour on the sash. It's just a pity she hates sashes. You're not crying, so that's a good thing. You're not running out the door saying I'm not wearing it. No, no, it's, it's a lot of lace. First impression. And a veil, you see that tucked in there by it. Yeah. First impressions. Oh, I think her face um, says it all. I don't think it's me, but... It's not you. Will, will when, we put it on? When it's on, it's very different. But do you think it's a veil? Yeah, it's a veil. It's a veil. But he chose it. Now for go, the yeah. moment she's dreading. We put it on. We'll see, yeah. OK. Paul's dress ticks all the wrong boxes. But is Orla prepared to just grin and wear it when she says, I do? It's completely shocked me. So we'll see what happens. And the veil. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I do like the little Demonte, So I was surprised about the, the purple ribbon. I was looking at it and I sort of said, oh. So, I hope she's happy. Now, really, we're going to bring you Happy's out. not the word that springs to mind. Perhaps it'll be better when she sees it on. Now, slow down. You're in front of a step. Up oh, you go. Yeah, okay. Step up. OK. Oh, my God, I'm shaking. Wow. Oh, my God. You're in a wedding dress. I am. <laughs> You're like... A needle in it. It's absolutely beautiful, and you, 
gosh. Wow. It is lovely, isn't it? It's beautiful. Absolutely. The lace is magnificent. And it's a proper really wedding nice. dress, like. It is gorgeous. One more accessory and it's more than Orla can take. Right now when the veil goes on. Did you expect that? No, not at all. But I don't know if the bow goes now. <laughs> I think that just looks wrong sitting yeah. there. Yeah. Can that be changed though? The sash is consigned to the trash while Mum tries to save the day. What do you think about the veil? Are you happy with the veil? Yeah. The I veil. think the veil is lovely. Yeah. Well, he does like tradition in his own way. I don't know. You know. I've never bought a wedding dress before, so. Yeah. Who knows? Looks great on you. Really does. And the final verdict? If you want me to wear it, I'll wear it. <laughs> she wouldn't uh, be seen wed in it. Very good choice, Paul. Blissfully unaware of his damsel in distress, Paul checks on his venue, hoping it isn't still a building site. Meryl? Meryl? I have some bread for you. Paul? Well. <laughs> Ready for the party? Yeah. Do you want to come and have a look? That's a look. Bit more work to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> Under construction. <laughs> uh, you will have a bit more seasoning here. While the builders see to those finishing touches like running water, Paul figures out how to get a hundred guests to a ceremony in a swamp. Um, I have to bring the bus man up now to show where the where he has to drive the buses tomorrow to bring all the guests. I have to find the helicopter man, bring him up to show where, where to land the helicopter tomorrow. There's nothing I can do about the dress. I don't know whether she liked it or not, and I'm sure she will. And uh, that's the dress, so she's going to have to wear it. Oh, she'll have to wear it, and the photos will be a permanent reminder. It's the morning of the wedding, and in a nearby hotel, breakfast is a guilty pleasure. I'm allowed to eat chocolate now, aren't I? Yeah. That looks disgusting. Meanwhile, Paul's fashion sense continues to impress. I mean, I wouldn't wear this for a funeral. I go to funerals. It's not bridesmaid's dress, is it? It's not even a designer. It's, it's, it's not even... I tried to find, I tried to think of things to do. I, I actually considered painting this bit here with bleach last night to make it like pale grey. Oh, it's burnt. Oh, jeez, I burnt it. I'm okay. Just wish I was thinking. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> it's lovely, Paul. You did a great job. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to ram it down your throat later on. <laughs> Time for some bubbles and some bitching. Oh, um, you getting excited? Yeah. What about the champagne or about getting married? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Aww. You haven't seen the dress? No. I it would suit no. you perfectly. Was it? Do you want to, do you want to swap? <laughs> yes, mine's vile. <laughs> it's a gorgeous dress. It's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Is it? It's very pretty. Yeah, right up it's my lovely. street. That's it. And it does fit really nice and looks really nice, but would I pick it? No. Just not with your head on it. <laughs> Snap. Done deal next week. Yep. <laughs> I did think it. You're getting married! Mm, I know. Thanks for being like Brian. Oh, it's been great fun. In Moy Glass, Paul is moving at his usual leisurely pace. Do you know how to tie a tie? Uh, no. And all you need to do is follow some simple instructions. Easier said than done. I have no idea what you did. <laughs> okay, you need this bit short. I remember your man doing that anyway. Yeah. Shoot this. See, I don't know. That's right. Oh, that's shit. We'll Google how to tie a tie. Okay. I'm sure YouTube has an opinion on it. Adjust the length of the tie so that the narrow end is just above the top of your pants. And sometimes even Google can't help. To the left side, and this time <laughs> bring her wide into, into the top, wrong, huh? up through the loop created huh? around your neck. Is that how you wear a tie? Back in Gort, Orla is about to meet the guests of honour all the way from Australia. Come on, look at man. It's very good. I hear you need this. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, no. Orla hasn't seen her sister Audrey for nearly three years, and she has never met her nephew I Aiden. Been on Skype, have I? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been a hell of a whirlwind and try to keep a secret from everybody, you know, so uh, it worked out very well in the end and it was unbelievable the surprise people got. A good program. <laughs> That's what you made it. <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't expected to order to be here. Yeah, it's great. It's like we'll have all the family together. <laughs> You know, without more than it's for you to be here for me, like, yeah. As a family, we haven't been together in a long, long time. And it's just absolutely wonderful. Is mummy going to put on a silly dress? <laughs> but they have to interrupt the family reunion. There's a wedding to go to. And like it or not, the bridesmaids have to put on those dresses. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, they are beautiful. <laughs> wow. The colours, they are oh, they're beautiful. Lovely. They're very different. Oh my Suzanne. God. Suzanne. Gorgeous. <laughs> kind words, but Suzanne has planned a cover up operation. Yeah, I love the title. I think you look gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted you Don't didn't pick the dress. Don't worry, I think you look gorgeous as well. <laughs> has Paul surprised you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, as surprised as they are. <laughs> Finally, here comes the bride. All waiting. Are you ready? Yes. Why are we waiting? Oh, 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 now for some glamorous gifts. Lots of glitz. Oh, oh, oh that is fantastic. Oh my god. They I love. Yeah, this I love. <laughs> to add some colour, Suzanne made a bouquet, and it seems to be doing the trick. Oh yeah, I love the colour. I got my colour, finally! <laughs> Okay, okay. I didn't yeah. really go with the dress. I thought. So I'm not a white person. <laughs> I'm white skin, that's enough. Do you like them, Ethan? Yeah. They smell nice. Nah. Paul's in a hurry, and even the dogs in the street know it. Noodle, shift your ass. Paul's guests will be boarding the bog bus to the mountainside ceremony, and the best man does an impromptu weather report. I'm a bit worried about this. It's turning a bit shit. Uh, looks like we're going to get wet. Nobody is ringer, I doubt. <laughs> Boys, we put some coats on or something? The kids may have their coats, but the ladies are heading for the bog in their high heels. venue is swamped with guests. The scene is set. Altar, flautist, a pagan wedding celebrant and 100 damp guests. All they need now is a bride. And all the bride wants is her car. But today, Orla will arrive in style. With a view of the entire west coast, Orla tries to work out where she'll be landing. This is rocketory here. Oh my god. Oh my god, are we getting married in rocketory? Oh my god, it did! 
The climate may be wet and windy, but the bride gets a warm welcome. And the bridal boots are perfect. Oh my god! Oh my god! Woo! Am I going this way? Now for the wedding march. <clears throat> march. Thank you. <laughs> After three weeks apart, at last, Paul and Orla are back together. Orla and Paul, we get her here today to witness and celebrate an act of deep love. We shall join these two to become one. This cord is a magical tool that binds you both throughout all the planes of existence. By the blood of thy blood and the bone of thy bone, I bind thee, Ola and Paul, two bodies, two minds, one soul. I bind thee as long as love shall last. This oath you made to each other by the sun and the moon, by the fire and the water, by night and day, by earth, sea and skies. With these vows, you swore to each other. You are now husband and wife. <laughs> Paul, you look fantastic and this is our hangout, this is our den, this is where we come and play and be with the kids and go swimming, so it's fairy tale. <laughs> Absolutely fairy tale, it's great. Yeah, perfect, yeah. You sit there. <laughs> the magical mystery tour continues, hopefully to somewhere with a roof. There it is, that's where we're going. <laughs> Thanks a million, you're great. Lovely to meet you. See you again. At the Sleeve Aughty Centre, Ooh. there's not a builder's van in sight. Just a fairy tale welcome. I'm delighted, Paul. It's fantastic, like I knew he would. You know, it's gorgeous. And I like it because this is what he would like as well, you know, which is nice. We're both having the wedding we would love. Here's our dining room. Wow. You like it? Oh my god. I think actually Paul didn't do a bad job. Is this the kiddies table? I think Paul stepped out his, outside his comfort zone by actually doing this really. Uh, I think he's done quite well really. I mean there's loads of things that are wrong but the fundamental things he's got right. <laughs> They've been worries. Look little fairy. A little Paul and little Orla. Everybody's having a ball. Except the pig. And as the Prosecco pours, time to see what the guests make of it all. It's more of an informal kind of thing. I know everybody's in suits and stuff, but at the same time, you know, everybody's relaxed. They can just sit with who they want to and just enjoy themselves. They both look really at ease and neither of them seem to be stressed on the day. Thank God, because there was enough stress beforehand, you know. It's just, yeah, he's pulled out all the stops. And then, of course, bring me over, like, do you know what I mean? He's so, he uh, really has, like, Paul and Orla are speechless, and so is the wedding, so it's straight to the dance floor. Welcome, Paul and Orla. We're going to get them up to the floor. Fantastic wedding day. I said marrying Paul was the, was the fantastic part, and all the extra surprises made it extraordinary. Yeah, it was great. Absolutely lovely. She looks beautiful in the dress, and uh, yeah, my princess. She's got a fantastic man. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, I think you're doing her proud. He knows her better than she knows herself. When I saw Paul after the wedding, I think I had to tell him I was going to choke him with the dress. <laughs> he said, there's nothing to do with me. <laughs> I certainly will not go into this of organising weddings. I'm doing one. If this wife doesn't work out, I'm not having to get married again. 
I don't know, there is no words to describe it. It's my grin on my face, my smile, <laughs> my sore jaws and smiling, not tell you how happy I am. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Wait a minute, shouldn't the bride be wearing a veil? Oh, it blew away in the wind. Did you not see it? You didn't know you Gone. missed it, no. Landed in the lake. <laughs> <laughs>